good afternoon and welcome to XRF Scientific's webinar. Today we will be presenting dissolution using borate and peroxide fusions for ICP analysis. Joining me today on the panel is Frederick Davids, Capital Equipment Sales Global Manager based in Belgium at the XRFS Training Centre in Brussels. Um, I'll hand over to you now, Frederick, and uh, forward you with the presentation. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Steve. Uh, good day, uh, everybody. So yes, today um, presentation is about the decision using borate and peroxide uh, fusions uh, and what XRF Scientific can do to help uh, in this uh, uh, specific sample preparation. Okay, there is uh, many analytical methods currently used. We need to have a digestion dissolution uh, uh, to uh, put the sample in, in a good form uh, for uh, analysis. This is the case of elemental analysis type ICP US, ICP MS, and atomic absorption, but also other uh, techniques. And of course, the, the purpose, the aim is to uh, put the uh, sample in uh, novel environment compatible with the apparatus and, of course, the analytical uh, method. So the choice of preparation methods depend on several factors. So of course, the analytical method, but also the resistivity of the materials to decomposition. So it depends on the chemical and the physical properties of the uh, materials we want to dissolve. And of course, the elements of interest and the expected concentration of the elements of interest. So each uh, digestion method has advantage and limitation. And of course, the goal, the gain, is to gain in reproducibility, to gain in time, efficiency, and of course, in safety. So the first method, the most used method, is uh, digestion by acid. So this is done uh, on a magnetic steerer, or sometimes hot plates, or by high pressure vessel, or by a microwave. This type of digestion uh, requires sometimes multi-steps, so by one, two, three, or four uh, acid digestion, or by other reagents like uh, uh, peroxide. And this method requires uh, the manipulation of strong acid like fluoridric acid, perichloric acid, aqua regia. The, the other method that we will speak about uh, today is the digestion by fusion. So this digestion is done on a burner, furnace, or using automatic fusion system. The type of uh, chemicals used are the flux. We uh, have um, uh, flux type uh, lithium tetraborate, lithium metaborate, sodium hydroxide, sodium peroxide, sodium carbonate, and the list is, is longer. Uh, the aim is to transform uh, the sample to a soluble salt, uh, a salt which is easily digested with diluted uh, acid after. So the limitation of the acid digestion. So I take here two examples of strong uh, acid composition. So we have first the aqua regia, a mixture of uh, nitric acid and chloridric acid. The um, problem with aqua regia is that I have uh, a partial digestion and there is some elements, some components who are not completely dissolved, like, like the silicate, the aluminum silicate minerals they remain uh, uh, indissolved or partially dissolved. I have here also the case of the four acid digestion. So the mix a mixture of nitric acid, uh, perchloric acid, fluoridric acid, chloridric acid. Again, here there is some minerals who are not fully dissolved. And this is the case of the zircon, chromite, rutile, tungsten, corundum, um, the problem also is that some elements are not fully retained. And for example, the silica is fumed off as uh, um, tetrafluoride um, silica. And there is some volatiles 
uh, antimony, uh, mercury, uh, thallium, and some elements may also reprecipitate as an insoluble, insoluble salt made of potassium or aluminium, and of course will not be uh, uh, in the analysis or completely in the analysis. So why use fusion digestion? Ger generally, fusion is more aggressive than acid digestion. The fusion uh, provides a complete chemical analysis. We say it's the near total analysis of most uh, analyte. The operation, so fusion plus dissolution, is, is fast compared to some acid digestions. Um, and surely it's below uh, 30 minutes. Uh, this is more uh, safe because there is no manipulation of strong acid. We require specific environment like per perchloric acid or fluoridric acid. Um, there is no manipulation of high pressure uh, vessel. And we can automatize uh, the complete sample preparation. So we distinct two type of uh, digestion method by fusion. We have first what we call the peroxide fusion. This is in fact, the, I will say the alkali uh, fusion using all alkali uh, uh, flux type, uh, sodium peroxide, sodium hydroxide, sodium carbonate, and also others uh, uh, flux. So this uh, type of fusion is suitable for many refractories, minerals, chromites, metallics, carbides. So uh, uh, I will show a little bit more uh, the, the different uh, uh, applications. So uh, for example, uh, uh, this flux can be very uh, oxiding, strongly oxiding. This is the case of the peroxide, of course. And this diffusion involves the complete digestion of the sample in the molten flux. And this uh, uh, residue after is acid soluble. The temperature uh, are between 400 and 600 degrees. And the retention of volatiles is uh, quite good compared to uh, 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 the buried fusion uh, we will see a little bit later. So the time, the fusion uh, time, so time to do the fusion and the dissolution takes between 20 and 40 minutes. And the type of crucibles used are made in zirconium, nickel, or vitreous carbon. And then after we have the digestion by the buried uh, flux, the buried, uh, what we call the buried fusion. So this is made with lithium metaborate or lithium tetraborate or mix of the both. So this is made at, uh, at a higher temperature and this is used for uh, minerals, uh, refractories, um, uh, rocks, uh, uh, cement, so uh, uh, more minerals uh, products. So again, it, in, it involves the complete digestion of the sample in the flux, in the molten flux, and this, uh, uh, the product obtained is uh, acid soluble uh, with uh, diluted acid. Temperature range between 1000 and 1200 degrees. The retention of volatiles is moderate because, of course, we are at a higher temperature. And the total time, so fusion plus dissolution, takes about 10 and 30 minutes. In this case, the crucibles are made in platinum uh, gold crucible. So, for uh, the fusion, uh, um, the application uh, uh, are totally suitable for uh, ICP US, ICP MS, and atomic absorption. And the fusion uh, provide a complete chemical analysis and is then referenced, referenced at as, tot, as a total uh, analysis. So of course, uh, fusion digestion have limitations. So it's, it's of course more accurate uh, because the dissolution is, is higher, but we have lower precision. The matrix is a little bit more complex uh, because there is a, a high quantity of salt uh, uh, in, in the solution. Uh, so there is more reagent and there is, of course, more interference effect. So we need to dilute a little bit more. Uh, so uh, when you have delimit, uh, dilution, uh, it limits the analysis of trace elements. This is less the case now because we have uh, now very uh, um, pure flux available. 
so the lithium metaborate and the lithium tetaborate, for example, are uh, uh, available with a very high uh, purity. And of course, you have the risk of the loss of volatiles. So now the different uh, steps for uh, the fusion. So here we have the case of the peroxide uh, fusion. So the typical sample preparation, so zirconium crucible, flux, um, here is sodium peroxide. Uh, we um, take 0 0.5 gram of sample, 6 gram of flux. Fusion is done uh, um, at the temperature between 250 degrees up to 500 degrees up to obtain com complete dissolution. It takes about five up to 10 minutes to uh, complete, uh, completely digest the, the samples. And after uh, when the sample is completely dissolved and, and uh, uh, coated, then we can uh, dissolve the residue in a diluted acid. So now I have a small video to show you how it looks like. So of course, here is done manually with a hand burner. So you, of course you need to mix. Here we can see that we have sodium peroxide and the reaction will start uh, in a couple of seconds. So yeah, we can see that the reaction start. This is quite, I will say, quick. It's an exothermic uh, uh, reaction. And then we need to continue to mix the tongs and continue uh, to, uh, heat up to have the complete dissolution of the uh, sample in the in the flux and then after when it's completely dissolved then we can continue to the uh, next steps so of course when you do that by uh, hand it's a little bit more uh, complicated uh, surely when you have a, uh, a lot to do the typical application um, so first as you can see there is many uh, flux available. So we have the sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, the sodium peroxide, mixed of sodium peroxide and sodium carbonate, sodium carbonate, potassium carbonate, and again a mix of sodium carbonate and potassium carbonate. Different range of temperature, so different melting points, so different range of uh, fusion temperature, and also different type of dilution. So all these flux have, uh, I will say, more affinity for some uh, uh, products, some application. The most used flux are the sodium peroxide or the sodium hydroxide, or mixed of sodium uh, hydroxide, uh, peroxide, and sodium uh, carbonate. So the reactivities of the flux can be classified as follow. So the most reactive are the peroxide, then after the hydroxide, and then the carbonate. So if I take, for example, a typical application with sodium uh, peroxide for uh, uh, the fusion of samples containing platinum, rhodium, palladium, so or some refractories. So the sodium is probably uh, one of the most uh, reactive uh, flux. So this, this works very, very well for uh, th this type of application, metallic uh, product. If the reaction is too violent, we can add a little bit of sodium carbonate to temporize to reduce a little bit the, the speed of the reaction. So in uh, at XRF Scientific, we have a specific model made to do uh, such fusion. So for peroxide, carbonate and hydroxide fusion. So this is the Phoenix Go available in two size. So the first model is equipped with two fusion position and the second uh, device is equipped with eight fusion position. So this the big advantage of uh, using automatic system is that uh, we can do multiple and repeatable fusion uh, with the different flux. And these machines are made to uh, endure, uh, I would say, exposure with aggressive uh, and, and uh, a complicated environment uh, like peroxide, hydroxide. And of course, the throughput is, is, uh, is uh, far better compared to the manual uh, fusion because everything is done uh, fully automatically. So the key features of the machine, so two or eight fusion station, the machine uh, work with only uh, one combustible gas. So there is no air, no oxygen. 
So this is a completely uh, new technology for the burners. We can reach temperature from 300 up to 1000 degrees. So the operation is really uh, reliable. So we have a very, very good flame stability and that's make the success of the, the Phoenix. We can uh, program as many steps as we want for the heating, for the swelling, for the, the, the cooling. So the homogenization is done by swelling. So it's a real, uh, um, the, the, the real homogenization we will do with the ant when we mix a beaker. So it's very, very uh, efficient. And it's the cold to cold operation. So that means we put the crucible uh, colds and then at the end of the cyclus, when we, if the cycle finish, we recover the crucible cool down. And so of course the machine is equipped with a lot of safety uh, because we are working with gas, but of course, because the machine needs to be fully enclosed so that the operators are completely outside the fusion uh, area. So why to use the zirconium crucible for such type of fusion? Because uh, first, this, is, this type of product uh, have excellent resistance uh, to corrosion, uh, to uh, acid, except the fluorhydric acid because the, the lifetime is higher compared to nickel or uh, carbon crucible. This is uh, resistant at a, a lot of temperature and resistant to, uh, of course, the alkali uh, flux. So the sodium, potassium, lithium, carbonate, hydroxide, peroxide, and even borate, and other type of uh, flux available. It's resistant to sodium uh, peroxide, which is, of course, one of the most used. And, uh, of course, the, the zirconium crucible will not be uh, uh, reducible with uh, the fusion of metal. So the, the crucible will remain, uh, uh, will not alloy with uh, metallics. So here I have a small video to show you uh, uh, fusion with uh, alkali uh, flux. So first we will mix the um, flux peroxide and carbonate with the sample uh, to obtain an homogeneous uh, uh, mix. So here in that case, it's not needed to weight precisely the flux. So the crucible is after loaded on the machine and then we start the fission cycles. So we start with a small flame. So to try to uh, avoid too quick uh, reaction. Um, so we start from 300 degrees and then slightly the uh, mixture is uh, heated up to the uh, complete reaction uh, temperature. Here on the side, we can see uh, how uh, quick can be uh, uh, the reaction with sodium peroxide, for example. So it's really important that we have multi-step heating and not direct high heating to avoid the reaction is too uh, violent. And so here we can have up to four heating steps, but we can even have uh, uh, more uh, steps to bring the, same, the mix to the uh, dissolution uh, digestion uh, temperature. Of course, most of the time we will put the cover on the crucible. If uh, we have a, a very reactive uh, product, it's better to have the, the, the cover. And then we have the mixing, so it, it mixes clockwise and counterclockwise. And so we have already uh, the liquid leaking the walls of the crucible inside. And, and so it's a very perfect uh, uh, mixing. And then after we have the cooling. So the cooling is done in C2. So the, the, it's cooled by the, 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 the fans of the, uh, the burners. And when it's fully cooled, then we can remove the crucible and uh, put the crucible in the beaker to complete the dissolution. Uh, with the first uh, water and then after with acid. So I will continue. Now the borate fusion. So a typical sample pre preparation using uh, borate flux. Um, so first it's done in platinum gold crucible. The type of flux is uh, lithium metaborate or lithium tetaborate. The most used is the lithium tetaborate metaborate. Here we have lithium bromide, use it as a non-wetting agent because here, as we will see in the process, we need 
that all the product is going out from the crucibles. So typical dilution is one four up to one ten. So here 0 0.4 grams for 1.6 gram flux. So that's about the quantity uh, we need to have complete dissolution in a beaker of 100 milliliter. So the fusion is done at about 1000 degrees and it takes again about five to 10 minutes of heating. And then the dissolution take about four to eight minutes in the beaker. So now again, we will, uh, no, first, uh, very important yeah, for the buried fusion. Uh, it's exactly the same as for the XRF fusion. The sample need to be uh, fully oxided to be dissolved in the buried flux. So of course, if we have metallic exporter or if we have sulfide or product that not that, that are not fully oxided, we need to, to add some uh, oxidation steps. And uh, of course, this type of fusion is not applicable for carbon, precious metals, mercury, and element with an atomic number below uh, uh, nine. The typical uh, application. So, um, the, well, yeah, uh, example of application. So again, the most used flicks are the lithium metabrate, the lithium tetabrate, or mix of the both. Um, <clears throat> so again, we have different range of temperature depending of the melting point of the flux composition and the dilution are quite similar for both type of uh, for uh, all the, the type of flux we, we have um, so typical application silicate rocks dolomite carbonate um, so a lot of minerals uh, products again in this type of fusion we need to add a good amount of uh, lithium bromide to be sure that all the product is going out from the crucible and surely if we use an automatic machine like uh, this is the case uh, for us so um, <clears throat> the um, at xrf scientific we have the xrf use icp uh, made for the this made uh, this type of uh, uh, fusion um, we have uh, uh, the XR Fuse 1 with one position, the XR Fuse 2 with two position, and the XR Fuse 6 with six position for uh, fusion. So this is how it looks like. So each position is equipped with a separate magnetic uh, steering. So here one, two, and six uh, magnetic steering uh, place. And of course, we can put up to six uh, beaker so the capacity of the beakers are 100 milliliters and the beakers are made in teflon and so of course there is a magnetic uh, steerer in the beaker uh, for the dissolution so uh, the big advantage of the xr fuse is the fact first that on is done fully automatically so the the, the product is directly poured inside the machine in the beakers and the dissolution is made in the machine so uh, no uh, operators intervention during the full uh, cycle and also the machine are fully enclosed and equipped with an exhaust system so all the vapors are going out from the machine without uh, risk uh, for uh, the operators to have fumes and etc so the the big advantage is that that everything is done in an enclosed environment without contact uh, to uh, uh, the product the fusion and, and 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 vapors or any anything so that's a very safe uh, um, operation so the key features of the machine so uh, of course this is fully automatic we can reach uh, 1250 degrees uh, because it's a furnace it's a real-time temperature uh, reading uh, we can program uh, 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 members of uh, fusion cycle. Um, the homogeneity, homogenization is done by uh, rocking. And uh, in this uh, 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 mixing, we can change the angle and, and, the, and the speed. We can change the pooling angle, angle. We can change the magnetic steering uh, speed. Um, a very important point also is the contamination because all the uh, the alders, the shafts are made in high purity ceramic. There is no contamination inside the, the furnace. And again, like the Phoenix Go, the operator is 
fully uh, out of the fission area. So the, this is fully enclosed and again a cold to cold uh, operation. And we, had, we have, of course, a lot of safety uh, in the machine to protect the operator. Uh, one of the big advantage of the XR fuse is that you can have a configuration fully made for ICB, but you can have a configuration able to do ICP and XRF with the same uh, machine. The crucible, so why platinum gold crucible? Again, because it resists at high temperature, so uh, we can go surely to up to 1,400 degrees with uh, the platinum gold crucibles. Um, it has good mechanical uh, strength at fission temperature. Um, of course, chemically inert, corrosion resistant, oxidation resistance. Uh, and uh, it's, it's the perfect uh, uh, crucibles for all borate fusion. Uh, of course, the important point is that all the uh, sample need to be fully oxided before uh, to do uh, the, the fusion, because if you have metallics or even sulfides, it can attack the, the platinum gold crucible. But this is the same as for the XRF, uh, exactly the same way to do the, the, the fusions. So again, I have a small video to show you how it works. So first, you weight the sample. Again, in both cases, the sample needs to be weighted precisely up to the four digits. And here, in this case, the flux uh, is also weighted uh, precisely in uh, the platinum gold crucibles. So flux again uh, with uh, a releasing agent to avoid there is residue remaining in the crucibles after the pouring. So after everything is weighted, we will mix uh, homogeneously the sample and the flux. It helps for the dissolution and, and perfect contact between the flux and the sample. So we will load the beaker, no, the Teflon beaker in the machine. So there is slots made for that, so we can just insert. Of course, the solution is already in the, the beaker and the magnetic stirrer also. So we can already see that I have the, uh, the mixing, uh, the steering in, in the solution. So we load the crucibles and then we start press start and that's it. So the machine uh, start is uh, cyclus automatically. So go through all the different steps. So preheating, main heating. So it's possible to do the oxidation uh, in the full process. Uh, but again, this is another uh, topics, but we can do that uh, fully automatically with the system, with a preheating, main heating, and then uh, the rocking inside the, the furnace. After everything is dissolved, uh, the, the mixture is poured directly in the beaker inside the, mach the machine. So we can precisely uh, uh, regulate the pouring, the angle, so that we are sure that everything is in the solution. And again, like I told you, we need to have enough uh, um, releasing agents so that there is no product remaining in the crucibles. So here we have the uh, dissolutions uh, inside the machines and after four, eight minutes, depending, uh, the product is completely, the mixture is completely dissolved in the solution and then we can just take the beaker and uh, dilute uh, to the correct uh, dilution to go after to the ICP or the atomic absorption. Okay. So to conclude, so the the fusion machine uh, type Phoenix Go or XRF are a really simple and safe way to do uh, uh, digestions. So the fusion is more accurate because it's fully uh, automated. Uh, we have a complete uh, digestion in less than uh, 10, 10 minutes in the fusion machine. And then after we have the dissolution would take also maybe 10 minutes. We increase the repeatability using the, the automatic fusion machine. Uh, so the pr pr process is completely automated, so safe for the uh, operator. And also it's completely out of the, uh, uh, the operator uh, dependent. So uh, it makes it more uh, reproducible. Uh, the productivity is high and surely if you have eight position, and it's of course uh, safe and easy uh, to use and no uh, dangerous uh, reagent like uh, uh, strong acid. Thank you. And uh, if you have uh, any question, you're welcome.
Oh, thank you, Frederick. That's great. Um, a lot of information there, and we have had a couple of questions come in. Um, the first one is, how long does a zirconium crucible last? How many samples? How many cycles? Okay, again, it will depend of the type of uh, fusion we will do. If we are doing uh, metallics, uh, the crucible will sulfur a little bit more, like you saw uh, in the video, the reaction can be uh, very, uh, uh, so it's very intense and, and really ex exothermic. So, um, but we can count of about 100 fusion per uh, per uh, crucibles. That's about the, the timing. It depends. It could be a little bit more, a little bit less, um, uh, and it depends of the of the thickness uh, of the crucible. So at XRF Scientific, we use crucibles with a thickness of 1.2, uh, 1.6 millimeter, and we can go up to two millimeters. So it's very strong, very uh, rigid. Oh, excellent. Um on the slide that is currently on screen, we have both electric and gas. Is there any advantage in one or the other? Yeah, in fact, um, we prefer um, for the peroxide fusion, the gas machine, because it's completely open. And because the, the, um, the flux are more uh, reactive, you never know what will happen. And when it's in a closed environment, it's a little bit more complicated. And particularly if it is a, a furnace, it's a little bit more complicated to control and, and uh, avoid sputtering or uh, destruction of the crucible inside. With a gas machine, it's a more safe environment uh, uh, and protective environment for that. Um, the big advantage of the um, XR fuse uh, for buried fusion is that everything is done fully automatically. Uh, so it's directly poured in, in the beaker and, and dissolved inside the machine. So uh, that's another uh, an advantage. Uh, that's an advantage for the XRF. So yes, we uh, at XRF Scientific, we uh, have separated the two models for uh, uh, these, these reasons. So really one is made for borate fusion and the other one is made for peroxide uh, fusion. Okay. With uh, the XR fuse, some people doing glass bead may glass bead fusions may want to do uh, peroxide fusions every now and then. Can they do that in the electric using zirconium crucibles? In, in, in fact, you can do, so you can use a, uh, uh, an electrical uh, machines like the XR fuse for the peroxide fusion uh, and it worked perfectly. We have an option made to do uh, uh, such type of, of fusion. Uh, but again, inside the furnace, if you have a very reactive um, uh, product, uh, you 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 don't don't have the control inside the furnace, and so if something bad happen, yeah, you see it only at the end and not not uh, uh, not during the cycle. And with a gas machine, you can yeah, you have a better control of the of the reaction. Okay. So peroxide fusion are more reactive, I would say. Yeah. So using the electric machine, it would then still do the same process without the pouring as such when you use the zirconium. It, it is possible, yes. So we, we have, uh, if the machine is uh, uh, available as uh, is, uh, um, standard, we have what we call an ICP option. So this is not the, uh, the, 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 the beaker uh, option. This is an ICP option. When you uh, start the fusion cycles in ICP mode, the machine will not pour. So the machine, uh, the, the, the crucible will go out from the, uh, the, the, the furnace and directly cool it without pouring. Uh, and then after you can remove the crucible for uh, continue the dissolution uh, uh, on, on the side. So yes, it, it, it's working uh, again. Um, that, that there is a is just just the, the the control of direction. You need to be sure that everything is going well. But it, it's possible to uh, to use zirconium crucible in the electric machine. Yeah. Okay. Oh, well, that's uh, all the questions we have coming in at the moment. Um, so I thank everybody for joining us today, and uh, we hope the presentation has been useful and informative. Um, our next webinar will be in about eight weeks' time and further details of subject, et cetera, will, will uh, follow. Um, if you have any specific topics, uh, please uh, send us an email 
let us know and we can focus on even specific uh, elements that we need to do preparation for or different tasks that you may be having some difficulty with. So let us know and we can uh, focus on those um, as well as our other products and instruments uh, that XRF Scientific manufacture. So thank you, Frederick, for your presentation and thank you everyone for joining us today. Um, have a good day and we'll see you all soon. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye.